they got a guy who's been a workhorse. Yep. And if you're looking at Dan Campbell, and you just said this, Heath, you know, what we think of players versus what coaching staffs and general managers and front office think of players, I think they don't really think very highly of DeAndre Swift. It just sucks. You know, it just really sucks. And so, you know, in his chances to play, I think he will be more explosive and better than David Montgomery. Over the course of the season, though, I think Montgomery will be better. But oh, given I, the opportunity, I'll yeah. tell you right now, if the Bears don't do anything significant at running back, Khalil Herbert will probably be my favorite running back in that division. Wow. So that'd be, well, over Dalvin Cook, if he's still in that division. And Aaron Jones, yeah. And Aaron Jones. Um, okay, so let's talk about, do you think Montgomery can give us more than what he has given us in his first four years, which has look, he's been, you drafted him in a dynasty. Not 2020. He's not going to be better than that. Uh, right. He was a top 10 running back. He had that big six game stretch to finish things. Um, yeah. Do you think, you think we can get the best, maybe most, should we call it, talk about efficiency? Maybe the best on paper season for him? Yes. Should be. Um, yeah, like not counting stats by 2020, but if you're talking about best yards per carry or however you want to measure, I think he'll be his most efficient season. Okay. What are you thinking right now for a round if we were drafting tonight? Oh, <laughs> Let's draft. Yes. Jamie, get a, get a draft. We're going to do a draft next week. Uh, I'm going to guess round five. Uh, five is what I thought. And Swift? Yeah. Four. I think PPR are very similar. Non-PPR probably a round or two later. Okay. All right, that's the funny thing about Montgomery is is he gonna that pass catching role has been as you said, Heath, he's been very good there. So if he loses that, I he's gonna have to be more efficient, obviously, as a rusher. I, I mean, and like if if it's more towards what Jamie was saying about Dan Campbell, like it might it could just be that there's been a movement with some teams they want to have two guys that you don't know if they're gonna pass or run when they bring in the game. It could be that Montgomery's just the lead back and and Swift's 35% of the snaps as the, as the secondary back doing all those things. There there's, you know, the, the betting odds right now, assuming Rogers leaves the Packers have the Lions winning the division. And so if that happens, which, you know, I, I think a lot of people might still, still be surprised by it, but you look at the Vikings and, and they're, they're, they're off season right now. They're, they're, they're losing a lot of guys and clearly the Packers, you know, a lot of people clearly understand that, that team's going to change dramatically. And the Bears, while looking like they're doing a lot, maybe the second best team in the division. The, the Lions have put together a very nice roster. They had great signings on day two with their secondary. And so if they view themselves as a playoff team, I'm going to guess they want to have DeAndre Swift healthy there. So that kind of speaks to where Dan Campbell, I think, is coming from, trying to make sure they get him to December, January, and maybe February. What did Mosley? Was it an Achilles for Mosley or an ACL? Um, ACL. So, so the Lions signed Emmanuel Mosley, and Mosley was the lockdown cornerback for the 49ers, and then he tore his ACL. They signed him to a one-year deal today. It's going to be where, or they they will sign him. They agreed to it. A uh, one-year deal worth six million dollars. Earlier in free agency, I think it was on Monday, they agreed to a deal with Cam Sutton. So. Their pass defense was terrible. They've got out and gotten two cornerbacks right now, and Sutton got a three-year deal with twenty-one and a half million guaranteed. Uh, the Vikings, as Jamie mentioned, they have they did sign Marcus Davenport, an edge rusher, to a one-year deal, but they've lost Dalvin Dalvin Tomlinson. They've lost Patrick Peterson. They've lost Eric Kendricks. Um, so yeah, and the Darius Smith wants out. Okay, and, and, I mean if the if the Lions can shore up their secondary, that is a huge huge deal, and they're taking steps obviously to do that. Um, so, so just like on the same note, Jamal Williams is the former Packer. You were forgetting about that. The jets are going to bring in, <laughs> they've got to run Brees hall as well. Do you, th what do you think about Rashad Penny, Jamie on the Eagles? I mean, it could be what we saw at the end of the 2021 season, you know, when he was just an absolute superstar, but you know, you're going to get missed time. I, I think just again, to compare him to the dolphins guys. If they don't go out and get somebody, with I totally agree with Heath, it seems as if they're going to go out and get somebody. And, you know, drafting a running back on day two is, is the most likely situation. But um, if if he ends up as, uh, let's just say, oh, yeah, we're comfortable with Penny Gainwell and and Boston Scott, or let's say it's it, it's 
it's a late pick in the draft, you know, a day three pick, or it's a, you know, a, a Travis Homer type of guy that's that's out there still, Chase Edmonds, let's say. Um, I think you got to feel pretty good about the upside of what Penny could be if he stays healthy. It's the, it's the biggest if of all, but you know, it's just there's there's so much to love this offensive line, this quarterback, this coach, this situation. You know, I mean, he's he's certainly been more explosive when healthy than Miles Sanders, as you just illustrated. So. You know, he's not going to catch a lot of passes, but I think he could score 11 touchdowns like Sanders did. He could have a, a, a 1,200-yard season, but that would require him staying on the field, and that just hasn't been his MO. And I'm, I'm usually pretty, like, give people – don't say people are injury-prone, but Penny has pretty much reached that Will Fuller range for me where I'm just – I don't think you can project him for more than 10 games. Maybe maybe he will he'll be able to do it. I hope he can, but it's just been too many years. Yeah, it, it, the carry. There are obviously not that many carries, but in terms of big plays per carry, I th- I think he's really been the best in football for the that last six game stretch in twenty twenty one and the first four games of twenty twenty two. Right, it's just not... <laughs> so good. And, and, and Ken Walker, great explosive numbers. Rashad Penny, a lot better than him. Penny, I mean, it's really it blows your mind how good his numbers are. Okay, he, he also he also like could not make it to week one. You know, we just don't know. Like he's remember last year when he got resigned for the one year five million dollars. He had a hamstring issue and mini camp and struggled to stay healthy in training camp. You know, it's just that's that's the unfortunate situation. Like if if you have him in dynasty, I think your window to sell is right now. You know, sell the hype. Good night. <laughs> And there's a lot of that. Um, I do see in the chat some, someone asked if Gainwell's worth holding 100%. Yes. Look at oh, you. Gainwell's, yeah. Heath, That's- welcome to the chat. Way to go, man. <laughs> I figured out where the chat was, Jamie. Yeah, Heath was at the private chat the, for, for the last two years or however long we've been using Streamer. Oh, me too. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. Hit comments. Uh, all right. Assuming Aaron Rodgers goes to the Jets, does Alan Lazard hurt Garrett Wilson's fantasy value? I don't think so. I think he hurts Elijah Moore's potential of maybe re-emerging. Um, Lazard is a great run blocker, which, you know, you don't really hear a lot about what wide receivers are good at. But, you know, in some of the, the comments about where he could be useful to a team, it was he's, he's very good on the perimeter with his run blocking. Now, granted, you know, we, we saw 100 targets for him last year. He didn't necessarily take advantage of that situation. You know, some of it was health related for him. Obviously, the offense not necessarily being as as pass happy as it was the two previous years under Matt Lafleur. But I think you know this this situation of Aaron Rodgers holding the Jets hostage right now and saying you have to bring in Lazard, you have to bring in Randall Cobb, you have to bring in Mercedes Lewis. It's really, I think, about all of it impacting this Jets offense. And and like he said, you know, we see the talent of Garrett Wilson. We we know what the upside can be. And the hope would be that Aaron Rodgers could still unlock it. But if all these people are coming there, it's like, that's his crew. <laughs> you know? so. he, he may not even know who Garrett Wilson is. <laughs> like he, um, I, I'm really, I've started to cool a little on the whole situation. That's a shame. That's a shame. Uh, if the Jets sign Alan Lazard, Mercedes Lewis, and Randall Cobb, and then Aaron Rodgers retires, it would be so blank. So Aaron Rodgers? Yeah. Awesome. I was going to say, so Jets. Awesome. Awesome. 